Well, fellas, you can see that uh, we didn't make it through our part. Uh, the tool broke there. So we just went ahead and stopped. We got another three flute end mill. It's not a rougher, but it is uh, another carbide end mill. And I went ahead and set up the mist coolant. You just, we'll just have to deal with the noise. Uh, that thing galled it up, and that's what broke her broke the end mill so a little disheartened we thought we'd make it through the part but evidently we didn't so we're going to try another one if we break this one we're going to go in the house for the day so here we go ready yeah i'm ready we're still controlling our mist coolant by hand we got a couple more things to do before we uh get it done sorry about that the V hit the uh, hit the tripod so we found the function of uh, control J uh, we jumped to the line of code where we wanted to start again instead of had to rerun through all of it we changed our tool offset for the new tool it will show it helicing in and starting all over, but I'm gonna raise you guys up just a little higher. There we go. We uh, also changed our feeds and speeds. Uh, we slowed down to 40 inches a minute and uh, 40,000 step over because the rougher really, really could take that and this one won't. We've been running the lathe so long we keep forgetting some of the stuff that we used to do four months ago when we ran this. So, oh well. Crap happens, I reckon.
back down to it and how we're going to do this. Works a lot better with coolant. in mid because our other tool was a rougher we didn't change all of our cam we ended up just changing uh just that one tool real quick so it's asking for tool one this is tool one it's a three three flute half inch in mill we've got a couple operations for it to do going to square this end. Once we square the end, it'll go in and clean up the pocket. Right? Hopefully. That was a 
a pretty healthy cut. Not sure what all the chatter is about. All in all, in the end, we've come to the conclusion that a half-inch windmill is just too big for the rigidity of the Bridgeport running it, so uh, we try to use it sparingly. But we made it. I don't know how, but we did. Blow it off and... Uh, We'll give you a real quick shot of it. Looks like we still need to work on our uh, cam just a little, but uh, uh, we made it through it. Nothing like them good needle shavings sticking your shirt, poke you all over. All right, we'll we'll bring you back when we get to the next operation. Uh, we'll be like say we're going to be pocketing this out, facing the whole thing, putting the line down the edge of it here but uh we're gonna see how this fits and set up the second operations all right guys let's uh we're running this face mill again and uh we're taking 40 thousandths per step uh 40 inches a minute at uh 2000 rpm it's uh coming out pretty good decent finish about four and a half amps on the motor, which is basically its full load. Uh, yeah, almost five amps. We're a little bit over a full load on the motor, but it seems to like it pretty well. It's nice and smooth. Sounds good. So, I just thought I'd show you guys it running for a minute. Quite as clanky, but 
make it, so. Catch you guys in a little bit. Hey fellas, uh, we've been working on this lathe pretty hard. 
we had finally uh, finally got it to run. We fought it yesterday for about 14 hours. Um, today we've been at Brian's been back at it at he started at 7:30 this morning. We finally got it to where we can do tool changes. We finally got all the offsets set. We ended up zeroing parts off the chuck as a constant. Uh, it's a whole new world compared to the mill. Uh, you can see our massive. We've even got the cover still off the face of it. Um, just so you know, the new one, not compared to the old one, but the new one, the only way to get those plugs out is to go ahead and pull the face also off of it. If not, you'll pull these connectors apart and break them like this. It wants to leave the little lip right here in the board underneath the cover. So we've already broke one. I have to get that ordered. Uh, luckily we had, uh, we definitely aren't using the 485, so we stole that one and used it for the e-stop. Um, we're gonna cut, uh, we got a small finial here that we gotta make. We're gonna go ahead and show you how it runs. It does, uh, 475 inches a minute on Z and 375 inches a minute on X. So when it zips across, it's a pretty quick little fella. We're going to be running the spindle at 1,000 RPMs and 40,000 step to cut roughing. And then it'll come back and do the finish passes somewhere around 10,000, I think. Uh, we're doing 40,000 step to cut at 12 inches a minute, I think. Uh, so far, it's worked pretty good. Uh, we've cut all of our stock ends today instead of making them all. Uh, we've made different shapes, and we have finally gotten to a pattern that we like. So even the one in the lathe there, it's cut on the other end. So uh, we're going to set you down in the, uh, the um, tripod here, and uh, we'll go ahead and... Uh, Fire this thing up and you guys can see it run once. Let's see what you think. Get you lined up. At least this ain't as noisy as the mill was when we first started. Uh, spindle's a little quieter. We've got the tool set up. We're already zeroed here off of Z and we've done a control Z. We're backed off the part. So we're going to hit... Uh, with got to load the file real quick sorry I missed that I thought I already had it loaded I load the file files loaded go to the MDI program screen F2 and we're gonna hit cycle start okay we're still turning the spindle on by my hand we're getting there though so, all right here we go first set of cuts First tool change. Go back and click OK. And we are using the tester version of the Masso software, the new one. And uh, it, it's got some kinks. Here comes the finish pass. Keep just a little bit of coolant on it. Not much. There it is. Completely done. Took a minute and 24 seconds to run. Uh, I know if you guys have seen any of our other uh, any of our other uh, videos on the on the uh, 
on the mill running this instead of the lathe, this size finial would have took us at least uh, probably seven to eight minutes and here we are we're done in a minute 24 uh, the more rapid returns for the Z the faster and actually it's more rigid than our setup was on the on the mill but uh, I'll take the part out here real quick and show you uh, how it came right out off the right off the spindle so let's see if you can see that there come out pretty good Decent uh, finish. Uh, might be a little bit of a record player there, but not too bad. Well, anyway, fellas, uh, this is what we've been up to. Uh, hopefully this thing, uh, we've got it figured out and can keep it running. Um, all right, well, have a good day. We'll catch you later. Anyway, uh, here's what we're making today. We had 16 of these little fellas to make. We've got a couple of them polished. Uh, the rest of them is running. running. There's our blanks. A couple ends left over. Uh, you can see it running. Here's the mass over in the screen. I'm not sure why the uh, cursor is way out there and never, never land. And not on the part, but eh, it runs okay. This is our roughing pass. Get ready to change the tool. Let me get out of his way. He's a man on a mission. Now this will still continue to rough. It's going to be one contour pass pretty deep. And we're going to do a finish pass over the hole. The whole fitting. And there it is. All done. So we had eighteen of these to make. With this one particular fellow. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll go over a little bit on the Masso. This is our wooden panel that we, uh, something to keep the dust off of when we get the door and stuff made. Up on the top left, we have three Allen Bradley power supplies. These are all wired in series to get us 72 volts for the uh, clear path servos. Sorry, I mean, this gimbal, we don't get along very well. Uh, there's the clear pass servos. They're the NEMA 23s. Um, I'll have to put the uh, model number in the uh, specs or in the uh, description of the video. Uh, the ball screws are just eBay specials for the length. That's a 1605 uh, for the Z. And I don't remember what the other one, the other one was. Um, I think it's a 1204 if I remember right. 4 pitch 12 millimeter OD and the other one the 1605 is uh, a 16 millimeter uh, with a uh, 5 millimeter pitch we made all the bracketry to uh, hold the motors on we put some linear square guide rails on it uh, the original tool post done away with the uh, the compound uh, so far, we've ran uh, uh, quite a bit. We've ran it quite a bit. We've probably got an hour's runtime or more on it. Uh, and so far, it hasn't missed a lick. Uh, it's ran really well. Once we got the setup done, it's uh, worked really well. Uh, there you can see the tool chains up on the screen. And away it goes again. Anyway, uh... All of the uh, ball screws, the mounts, all the stuff basically from eBay. Uh, we bought the power supplies up in the panel there. We bought those for, I think, 58 bucks for all three of them from a fella. And then, of course, the Masso, we don't even have the cover back on it quite yet. It's here somewhere, laying in the bottom of the panel. 
but uh, it seems to do really well. We're running a thousand RPM on the spindle. We're taking about 40 thousandths depth of cut and roughing at 12 inches a minute. And I think we're finishing at three inches a minute with a 10 thousandths pass. So uh, we took the little lathe there and pulled off the original apron. It's laying down there in the floor underneath the lathe. We made our own apron on the side there to uh, mount the ball screw. I don't know if I can get in there and see it or not. And we get the right place. Well, that's about as close as we're going to get. The ball screw's mounted in there behind. And it does still have the spring couplers and stuff on it, but they seem to be working for now. We'll probably change those to uh, some rubber Lovejoy style connectors. Uh, we've done some measuring on it. The Z-axis has got about two thousandths of uh, backlash in it and the X-axis is about four thousandths. And like I say, these are just rolled, pretty sure they're rolled ball screws with a real low rating. I mean, they didn't have a super high rating, but I mean, uh, we're, we're not building a super precision machine as of yet. Uh, anyway, it's just a little bit of an update of, our, uh, of the lathe conversion that we've done this last week. We took about 10 days to do it. Uh, took a couple days to get the Masso to cooperate with us. Uh, basically, part of it's because of setup issues, uh, a little bit of programming issues, uh, but anyway, we'll watch the roughing pass here real quick and I'll call it done. The first roughing pass. Gotta stay out of the operator's way. He uh, he gets grumpy if you get in his row. The Z axis will be 475 inches a minute, and the X axis will be 375. Both the clear path motors will run a total of. 2550 rpm or so at 75 volts and we're running 72 so i think we've got them set at like 2490 or 2480 somewhere in there well this is what we've been up to guys we'll catch you later